That's one reason I couldn't like this one, but in the future we can. But the library doesn't work on YouTube, right? Um, I might be able to make some arrangements. I'm not sure. We'll have time for discussion. Uh, anyway, I guess we'll get started. Six oh six, four eleven twenty four, and I'll call to order. Uh, the first for now, Commission on Conservation and the Environment, name subject to be changed and updated in the future. We didn't change it for this meeting because it was a city charter. Would the council have to vote to change it then? I believe so. At our request? I believe so. All right. Which we'll, we'll get into that later. But, um, okay, welcome commission members. In the absence of ratified bylaws, we'll follow the draft version and Robert's rules of the order revised edition for the interim and we'll call this meeting for order. Uh, we'll do a roll call. Close it. Actually, yes. That's not going to make the noise close? go yep. away, though. So the noise is actually in this room Here, because the mechanical room is upstairs. Yep, is that correct? Eric Bank is absent. Julian Shepard is present. But I'm happy to check. Okay, I am here. Matt Ryan is so far not present. <coughs> Richard Genaccio yes. is present. Scott Lawford is present. Thomas Costello is present. So we have seven out of nine members present. I'd like to open the floor now for any public comments. Would anyone like to speak? Is this an extra? Uh, there being no Public comments. I move okay. to the first order of business. Election of the acting commission secretary. The term acting commission secretary will be replaced with commission secretary upon ratification of the commission bylaws and a follow up vote. Do we have any nominations for commission secretary? And feel free to nominate yourself. Please don't all jump at once. <laughs> Do we have any takers? I say we nominate Matt Ryan. <laughs> I was going to say Eric Dank because well, he was the first. One of the ones that he was the first yet. to not come in. <laughs> uh, any interest at all? Going once, going twice. So I will nominate Eric Dank. Do I have a second? So you will name? I will nominate Eric Dank. That's okay. You can still be nominated. <laughs> Tom the second. Sure. All in favor? Sure. All right. Sure. All right. Okay. And, uh, I'll, can I add that he wanted the meeting Change for daytime today, so maybe yes, there's a nice trade we can make there. <laughs> Bargaining chip, okay. I will notify her. And, uh, in the meantime, I'll do my best to uh, do the meeting in minutes. But in the future, someone other than me will be the secretary. <laughs> um, if you want, I'll volunteer. Okay, great. Thank you. We appreciate it. Okay, everyone hear that? Yeah. I'm filling in for Eric. Richard will fill in for Eric <laughs> as the acting commission secretary.
Okay, uh, did everybody get a chance to at least take a glance at the bylaws that were drafted, the conversations that went back and forth? Yep. I am not very savvy with the computer word programs and the writing stuff. So I made my best effort there uh, as far as updating comments and all that stuff. So uh, I appreciate Richard's efforts on those bylaws. Um, just by a show of hands, before we take a formal vote, I would like to hearing opinions, possibly take a vote on ratifying the bylaws with the idea that we would form a bylaws committee tonight also, and then they would work on reviewing, editing, updating whatever needs to be done with the bylaws, and then we would revisit at a future meeting when they felt appropriate and we would amend it. That way we can at least have official business and we might buy some bylaws. So I think it would simplify things and, and not bring things into question in the future if we have things more to me. So that sound acceptable? Okay, so as far as taking a formal vote, uh, I would like to request somebody bring a motion to vote on ratifying the current draft bylaws. I move to ratify the current draft bylaws. Motion Richard, second Julian. All in favor? Great. Motion carries. Okay, uh, so now let's open it up uh, for discussion about the committees. Let's start with the bylaws committee. Who would like to be on the bylaws committee? Richard? Matt? I'll be on. So Richard and Scott, anyone else interested in being on the bylaws committee? Okay. So all in favor of the bylaws committee consisting of Richard and Scott. All in favor? <laughs> okay. Now I'd like to I'd like to propose a standing committee for climate action resiliency. Basically, as a standing committee, it would be in place with the idea of uh, going forward the task force committees would come out of that committee to work on the uh, climate action resiliency. It's just, it's on the city website and it covers uh, a great deal of things. But on the city website, um, if you look under that climate action resiliency, there's a special place, there's the consultant CNS, there's their report, there's their action plan, it goes back to the 2011 plan that was first put in place by the previous administration. And there's also, if you look under the planning department on the city website, you'll see a blueprint for Binghamton, which has a lot of information about 
past history ideas and plans having to do with uh, flood action plans and a bunch, a bunch of different related topics. Does that relate to some of the materials you sent us early on? Yes. Just to clarify, uh, yep. just to clarify that if you didn't know, Blueprint for Binghamton is a formal document. It's the comprehensive plan update. So it could be misleading when you read that title, you don't know if it's, it's mandated by state law. It has to be done every 10 years. So that was one of the administration should be coming due soon. Well, yeah, it's due. Um, yeah. Because mm -hmm. that was 10 years ago. Well, that was late. Just, I mean, yeah, it didn't get formally adopted until 2014. Right. Because so, they gave right. credit to the previous people, like some of us that yeah. were working here at that time. Hmm. Um, and the work was done, but they didn't really formalize it until 2014. So if it has legal, formal legal implications, such as, I mean, speaking kind of to the environmental aspect of that, planning commission is supposed to consult that document. When they're making decisions about a development project to see if it conforms to the stated goal, whether they do or not. It's another story, but that's what the law requires. So it could be a powerful document. So I think I think as we go forward. If everybody becomes more familiar with the climate action resiliency plan that's written right now, CNS is supposed to be updated with some of the greenhouse gas data. Personally, I would like to see some of the raw data and granular and be able to back up what's in those reports and also look at it in a way that from year to year to year, I'd like to see things graphed where you could see what is working and what isn't working. So as far as from the standpoint of different departments and how their actions that they've taken, what's the fruits of their labor? Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Is it getting more solid waste, less solid waste, more recycling? Um, all different kinds of things, the energy use, you know, where it states that the city went into a phase for the generation of, I believe it's all solar, possibly some wind, but all renewable energy, which is great. But also, how is the usage? Is it going up? Is it going down? Or, you know, it's that being looked at fuel usage, what vehicles, what equipment, how is that being? And, and things going forward. Um, what are the plans? Because I, I think it's important to have the discussions because from experience, uh, capital plans take many years before the action actually happens. But there's a lot of work involved, the funding behind things. And you've got to get that together. And, and is it a priority? So hopefully we can help shift some priorities to um, a lot of times it's just making people aware of it. They aren't aware of things that are going on that could be done a different way. I think we will be concerned with the current action plan, but um, I think it's a very good idea to look at the 2011 plan and see just where things have gone since then. I think Actually, relatively little of that was actually adopted. But I was actually on the committee to help write it, and I wrote a little bit, but Emilio Lodolci wrote far and away the bulk of it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and I, I look forward to having Amelia hopefully come to our, our meetings once in a yeah. while and, and touch a base with her, get her input, because I, I remember she was very involved with that. Yeah. And uh, it finds, if anybody doesn't know her, uh, She's the director of Vines right now. And has been for she was the director of planning yeah. in the Ryan administration. But she was the sustainable sustainability planner. That's right. Yes, yeah, sorry, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And terrific. 
they have done a terrific job with Brown State. They've come a long way from, from zero to where they are now in a relatively short time. Yeah, what's new is that's Lo Dolce. L O D O L C E. And they have the new building on Susquehanna Street that should be opening this summer. Mm -hmm. Strawberry Building, which is an interesting project. Uh, the urban garden that's straight on the corner. So the other building is being formed now? Yeah. Okay. Can I get a motion to? Form the Climate Action Resiliency Committee. Motion from Costello. Second. Second. Richard Tomaccio. All in favor? All right. Another unanimous vote. That's not good. No comment. We better be careful. We want to be accused of being rubber stamps. Right. right. Oh, I'm sure there'll be plenty of time for um, as we get down into the weeds. <laughs> I'm sure that's going to have to be there. There he wrong. is. Went to the wrong place. Huh? Late, late, but not forgotten. I went to the uh, library. Library. <laughs> we will blame that on Councilwoman Meadows, <laughs> whether it's her fault or not. <laughs> One vote to move from me to the library. Anybody else second? <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here because you were voted in as the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. But Eric's not here and he was. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's a nice secretary. Um, anyway, note that uh, 623. Matt Ryan has appeared at the meeting. So now we have seven of our eight members present. We have nine. Or oh, seven, oh, eight of our nine members. I right, forget about myself. Okay, so that commission or that committee has passed. Um, action and resiliency. Yes, yeah, so the committee. That's the name of the committee. So do we have anyone that would like to be on that committee? And sure, that, that's will. a standing committee. So, like I said, as as time goes forward, that will branch out into task force committees to get down into things and stuff like that. That's a, that's a good answer. I would like that to track what's been going on. I am with you yeah, on that. We'll definitely be working with that. On that project. Ashley would like to be on the committee. That's great. And Darius. Darius was on. And I would be on. I would like to be on. Scott would like to be on the committee. So, Matt, this is just this is a kind of an overarching committee. We're just going to be looking at the, the like as Julian's recommended, the uh, 2011 climate action plan from there forward. And we're doing it, and then we're going to come out with task force committees, which may also consist of members of the community that are interested in joining in on those committees. So we can get as much help as possible, because there's a lot of information that we want to gather and we want to go through and uh, try and come up with some strategies and recommendations for going forward. The 211 report was on the city website for quite a while, and then it went off. But I think it's back up now. It, it was on last I looked. Good. So look it up. You look hopefully the, the city of yeah. Hopefully okay. the solar eclipse didn't wipe it yeah. out. Those sorts of things. Right. Yeah. 
So I have Julius, Ashley, Darius, Scott, and Luke. Julius. I, I said Ashley, Darius, Darius, Scott, Scott, and Julius. Julius, Julius Ashley, Darius, it's Julian. Julius. Yeah. Yeah. Ashley, I'm, Darius. Just for the Darius. record, I'm interested in you know, Scott. Was, okay. Yeah. A more focused as task force. I books yeah, five months. We could not most of the car up again. Um we can revisit that. In the meantime, I wanted to bring up um, some interest. Uh, one of the people I spoke with is here tonight, uh, Jill Schultz. Well, uh, we got to yeah. the committee. Yeah, this is still in committees. Oh, okay. still in committee. So, and I'm thinking about this would be uh, another committee, a task force committee. What are we? How are we distinguishing? Uh, the standing committee of task force. I can find out. It's both. Task force is more specific topic oriented, I would say. Like if, say, my, my example of the task force would be flood resiliency. Flood resiliency. Say, Julian and I wanted to look at uh, energy and fuel usage or solid waste, quantities, volumes, disposal, and recycling. Very, very specific where you can get some data to back it up or have some reports and and come up with something, uh, a report that can be used to support possible legislation, uh, recommendations for operations, citywide or uh, any municipality, things like that. I look at task force as more as you have a specific mission that you're coming to a, set a you know your short-term goal in that so it's something achievable in the short term and then a long range goal. Based on your description, it sounds like the task force could be a standalone thing or it could be a subject of your yeah. Yeah. How, however the bylaws end up determining how it's specifically set up. And, and a, a lot of it stems from wanting to be able to bring the general public in and get them involved and give them a voice. Because, because I think we could use all the help we can get. Thanks to work on. I know we're still in discussion about committees. We were probably remiss to not introduce ourselves. Oh. Yeah, and my apologies. And, uh, describe briefly what our areas of expertise are, which might help each of us understand where we might be. Maybe to help each other yeah. or help the committee or whatever. You know? yeah. Great idea. Yeah. Why don't we do that now? Why don't we do that on the receipt but first finish the committees? Make that the That's fine. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Sorry, I didn't do that in the beginning. Uh, okay, where am I? Committees. Matt, do you have any interest in being on the standing committee for climate action and resiliency, which is a overarching climate committee. action and zoning resiliency? Oh, resiliency. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Put Matt down. And also the bylaws committee. Doing it. No. Okay. You could review them before we. Oh, everybody. Can review. Yeah, we'll make sure you, everybody has a chance to review them, have any comments before the meeting when we bring them up to have a. So we, we've already uh, voted and approved to ratify the draft bylaws that was sent out. And we set up a committee to work on the bylaws and review them. And we will, in the future, be uh, member them. Or the same.
Okay, so back to committees. So we have our committee set for climate action resiliency committee, which is everyone present except the town. Now I will bring up the topic that was brought to my attention. Uh, by a couple community members, as I mentioned, Jill Schultz was here tonight, and there was another community member, uh, Sean Cummings, who works up at Cornell Cooperative Extension, and they are interested in what Jill likes to call managed native gardens. And I found it to be a, a pretty interesting topic that I was unfamiliar with um, and have since learned some things about it. But uh, I think it would be worth having a discussion going forward to possibly uh, have a task force, maybe at our next meeting, take a vote on that. Maybe everybody could take a look at look that up and see if they have an interest in that. Managed native gardens, did you think? Yes. And looking at vacant lots and uh, places in the uh, floodplain and different areas of possibilities. Um, also, utility strips. How do we get the next information? Wait for an email or look at it by ourselves or not? We can look it up. I know Sean is a is a good form of information. Also, Jill, if she's willing to share her contact information, is a is a good uh, contact person with information about that. Sure. Um, there is a national group called the Wild Ones, and it's just wildones.org, and a section of the website is about native plant gardening and that goes through the why and what it's all about. Um, there's another organization called Homegrown National Park, which is also a very similar effort. Good places for background and um, I'd be happy if anybody wanted to find me. We could just say it, we could put it in the minutes of the meeting. You don't have to do that. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't have to do that. So I, I want, I'm interested in that also. I think uh, I need to be a few years on code. We've already had some email discussion about it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm some big property officer supervisor, so I know a lot about city property. Is there any other committees at this time it's that Tom, anybody would like to bring up? Yes. So do we want to make a motion on this or we could just hold a note on it? On the task force? Yeah. Um, what do people think? Is that something we want to do tonight or do we want to wait for the next meeting? Well, it seems like the task force was supposed to be subordinate to the board. To join to the oversight larger committee, so we did already form the larger committee. Yeah, so I don't know. Any thoughts on waiting? Any benefits to waiting? I mean, I'm comfortable moving forward with it. I know that what it is, and I'd like to be on it. Okay, sounds good. So, uh we could pass the motion and then see what else is So, shall we call it the Manage Native Gardens? Committee, or is there another name you would like for this committee? So I call it committee or task force? Or, well, task force committee. Okay. I think it was with that. Second. Okay, we have a, a motion to form the committee named task force committee named managed native gardens. Motion by Tom. Second. By Ashley. Uh, 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Unanimous aye. In favor, motion carries. So we have a new committee with the main, a new task force committee with the main managed native gardens. Public comment. Sure. Okay. Um, probably several of you know there's another city uh, commission called the Shade Tree Commission. And, um, it's actually jointly the city council and the mayor who appoint people. And it's been kind of dormant for a number of years. It was very active during uh, Matt's administration. And, um, but it's been resurrected. And, but I, all I wanted to say in this context was that it was a major concern of the, or a concern of the Shade Tree Commission, largely from Dick Andrus's initiative to actually do something about uh, a lot of vacant city property. He was thinking in terms of sort of fruit tree orchards, but you know, native gardens is in a way part of that. So, and I'll just throw out that I'm not quite sure where the sort of overlap of the Shade Tree Commission ends in this commission, but uh, as I say, the Shade, the Shade Tree Commission has not been very active, so. Uh, we'll see. Well, I'm hoping that things take on an organic form in this commission where we kind of join in you know, with these other organizations because I think we would get uh, more bang for the buck with more people. And, sure. and we don't want to have a redundancy on the efforts. Yeah, but we also want as much effort. Right. Put into topics. Yeah, uh, I was mentioning just priorities. that you know, we definitely want to coordinate with the Shade Tree Commission. Oh, absolutely. Incidentally, just the primary concern of Shade Tree Commission is actually street trees, uh, because the city has uh, jurisdiction over all the edges of the uh, streets, the utility but, strips. Right. They don't do say much about private property, but, but then there is a whole lot of city property that is. Uh, in the form of vacant lots too. Well, and, and also vines. Yeah. We want to talk to them because there may be uh, openings for more community gardens. I and mean, there's more, more things we can do that are new. Know, my brain is not working up to, up to par tonight. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, the more things we can do mutually beneficial. So, so who we want to have on this test course, I have Tom, Ashley, yep. You know what, I think I would like to work with that because that's kind of my bailiwick, is nature. Yeah. And uh, maybe take my name off, the, can I do that now? Take my name off the climate change, much as I'm interested in it, I don't want to yeah. be on everything, so. Okay. And you've got plenty of members on the climate. Yeah. So we should always consult. What's your last here. name, Jill? Schultz. S H U L C. There, there, you. Show there, you. Okay. there she is right there, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. you want to pass that around? Can everybody see that? So, again, to just share a comment on this concept. Coming from the technical side, it did the correspondence with you and Sean about. Uh, what this type of initiative is and what it can do. I think it's also important to keep as part of that discussion how that helps the taxpayer. Because the city has a rather large portfolio of vacant land created by demolitions. So, and a lot of them are in neighborhoods where it's like, you know, otherwise lots are populated with houses and then you got a vacant lot in the middle of the block or something. So pass this around actually. In our communications to council and to the public at large, it's like I think important to always point out how this is could work advantageously to taxpayers. Um, 
over just neglect. Because right now it's a, a liability to the taxpayer because it has to be both. And it has to be, the garbage has to be picked up. It, it's a huge problem, like a very, very large problem inside of city government. It's very expensive. Parks department has to put a lot of energy into it. So we should, I just don't know if, if you don't know how it works here in the city, it could relieve a really, really, really. Yeah, there's a lot of room for improvement there. I mean, I think it's something that even on the short end, yeah, really, it really could be a win-win. And uh, but the and the, the gar the garbage issue in particular, or whatever litter, whatever you want to call it, it's always going to be part of whatever we do. It's really important to remember that. Maintenance. Anyway, I just want to get that out there. Also, uh, Jill, would you care to be a member of the task force committee? Yes, she said. Yes. Okay. I'm okay. Good. Yeah. okay. Good. That's good. So now we're up to three committees. We don't want to overdo it. I would like to propose an eco toxicology committee to deal with toxins in the environment. Okay. Could you say that one more time? Eco toxicology committee to deal with toxins in the environment. Okay. That would, deal with toxins in the environment. That would be to assess toxic threats in the community and also make the public aware of them. Any of these things that would get into to legislation. So eco toxic ecology. Toxic ecology. Should we just share maybe ideas from everyone and then solidify, like narrow it down after that? Ideas of subcommittee or committees? Because I have some ideas too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I was thinking like public outreach, public engagement, and then also maybe one that's more uh, planning specific where we can review like site plans and zoning and do recommendations. The first one was public outreach? Yeah, public okay. outreach or engagement. Yeah, absolutely outreach. What was the other one? Um, I don't know what it would be called, but something that's more planning specific. So like reviewing site plans um, or like transportation plans uh, or zoning and giving recommendations. Oversight. Is that all of the ecotoxicology or oversight? These are separate. Just ideas so. Okay. We're just listing, listing committees. Yeah. yeah, but we should go through the same steps you want. I get the sense that our chair here doesn't want to do too much of this tonight, though. I mean, no, I can we can, you know, why, we can, but... we can do this tonight. Okay, I mean, I, it's I, moving I right along. I didn't want to get hung up in like a, a round robin. Of... I think we're near the end, of the yeah. but I think no, I think. I was thinking about these committees beforehand, but I got kind of sidetracked when I was earlier and did the second run. <laughs> so I started from scratch over again. Should we maybe call it public uh, outreach and education? The planning, according to the city charter, someone from the planning commission is supposed to be official member of this also city departments yeah. which Parks, uh, so far we have not had an overwhelming response i think that was one of the reasons we wanted to from the department the maybe um, yeah and i i think and we'll, we'll get into that conversation for example you know, as far as future future meetings where or when but let's let's just list the committees. I think that would be simple to list them right now, and then we'll just go through them bang, bang, bang. We won't spend which ones. We'll vote them, we'll formalize it. So, so Ashley, we have public outreach, planning, as planning and planning, 
Um, planning review. I know it says right in the city chart if you look at the list yeah. of what this commission is supposed to be doing. Yeah. That's part planning of review. But, but as far as the committee goes, planning and zoning. Sure. Yeah. Tom, any thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, because, I mean, this might not be the time to have the discussion, but there's going to be overlap because there's a legal responsibility of the planning commission to conduct the environmental review on the project. So, so we should be conscious that, uh, Matt, correct me if I'm wrong here, but um, it would be advisory to the planning commission ultimately through planning staff. Most likely. So, planning staff is supposed to do. Uh, I was on the planning commission uh, and I also was the zoning officer for the city. The planning staff or planning commission is supposed to get recommendations from planning staff. So, all I'm trying to say to you is this committee would be another layer in a sandwich that's already pretty multiple layers in it. How about just so that we're aware of what we're planning doing? Planning and Environmental Impacts Committee. I don't that know. So I, big. It depends what you're going. I think it's just important that this committee understands what it can do <laughs> and what what goals are appropriate to to come in, out of this. Group. And and we can we can come up with reports yeah. that are advisory. We're not here to manage anything. We're not here to dictate anything. Right. We're just here to do research, outreach, right, education, advisory, and yeah. in an advisory capacity. So I think there's different expertise. And in that respect, I, I think. I think it would be better to wait till the next meeting because I should have started out with Edward's background and a little more information because some of us, you know, I was the head of public works, Tom was co, Matt was mayor, it's um, also a lawyer, environmental background, so, and Julian's a professor. So it's like there's different backgrounds. He's a scientist, he has a lot of different knowledge in different aspects here and i'm sure everybody else has their backgrounds to bring the table so i mean one thing that tom matt and myself bring to the table is that we have an understanding of how the city how it, at least how it functioned 10 years ago how it does now i i can't speak to that i haven't been involved in anything in 10 years but at least understand the departments and the inner workings of what things may seem like they should be simple, but might be very difficult. Other things may seem to be difficult, but might actually be very simple. Um, and, and hopefully a lot of it um, is economical, where if we can save the taxpayer our advice and some of the things we come up with, and we uh, have reports and advice that can help different departments, save on funding, get grants, different forms of funding, uh, everybody wins. So that, I, I mean, I, I just, you know, it's, and it's like city council, uh, I'm hoping that they, it takes a while to figure out your role and what, what responsibilities you have and also what authorities you have and don't have. Because I think those those will help save time to people, and we won't put a lot of effort and energy into things that are an uphill battle to long term. Hopefully, we can get some short term wins with future goals down the road, and we pointed in the right direction. Because I think it's more important to be in the right direction than actually how fast we go. Um, anyways, so that being said, uh, I do think public outreach should be brought up tonight. 
because looking at Ashley's uh, background, it's all similar. Do you have a uh, background in outreach and communications or something along um, those lines? Part of part of what you do. Somewhat. So hopefully you'll be on that committee. I wasn't intending to, oh, honestly. No. My a lot of my work is dealing with local government. I don't do a lot of like direct outreach with like residents. Well, we're going to need outreach to local government and messaging. That's going to be important. Thinking about outreach, should we have a social uh, media site of some kind? Well, the city website. We use that. For the I think so. We we could have like our own Facebook. Uh, Want it too, right? But I you know, personally am not on any of that. Maybe that's and not. I think. That'll I be. think as a as a city commission, I think we want to stay on the city website. And any. Pardon? Oh, you I can. Don't think you can go on outside. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I I don't think it would be appropriate either way, whether you legally can or can't. I just think that you know, sure, everybody's free to however they want to express that. But as a commission, I think everything needs to stay on the city website as far as minutes or meetings or anything we have to say. And in our public outreach, we're going to want to have things approved by the commission if somebody's speaking for the commission. Yeah. You know, you can speak as a member, sure, and just say, I am a member. For yourself, you always want to have that perfectly clear because things things can really get hung up in the weeds and they'll get no traction and become discredited as an organization, and that is not helpful. Then. So, I think I would like to make a motion to psychology. Okay, do we have a, a second for a committee on ecotoxicology? Second. Second by Darius. All in favor? Okay. Unanimous. So that will be our fourth committee. So let's see who wants to be on. And who would like to be on the committee? Uh, ecotoxicology, Darius. Well, the committee of two? Yeah, I, I already raised my hand. Darius and Richard. Any public people? Maybe Eric. Like Maybe Eric. Eric. Okay. But uh, we don't have to vote for you, Richard. But... So, can you give us kind of an example of what you're talking about? What? Okay. Um, maybe a uh, Ground fields like the Hess Station on the corner of uh, Pennsylvania Avenue and Vestal. Oh, any kind of ground. spills Sorry. that have occurred. That's a not ground field anymore. It's been decertified by the state. I signed papers. Decertified. Uh, huh? Okay, so I'm just using it yeah, as an example. Yeah, but just say it. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, that, um, sometimes underground tanks leak and they contaminate the soil. Can't build there unless you treat the soil as toxic waste, and we could find out what other types of threats there are in the community. Maybe things are being dumped in the Susquehanna River or whatever, which is a source of our drinking water. It, there was a course taught at the university a couple of years ago called Ecotoxicology. Jessica Block, she's now at the University of Wisconsin Madison. Wasn't that part of what the professor that was at the, the county EMC meeting? Who's yeah, he was talking about PFAS and like the soil. I mean, it's a very broad field. I just yeah. gave one example. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we look at um, sources of toxins in the community, which could be you know, exhaust from trucks going through the community. 
all types of activities and just assess them and see if we can remediate them. That's why I mean, the reason to change the name and bring it up to date from the 1970s is that we don't want to just conserve, but we want to sort of remediate, make the restore the environment. Sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So that, I'm that thinking be, more along uh, well, in that line, that's why I wanted to flesh it out a little bit. It's, you know, it's environmental justice issues. Absolutely. That's is that Absolutely. what we're talking about. Yes. Because a lot of times pollution sites are located near poor communities. Absolutely. I used to live in the Bronx, so I know that firsthand. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that's something to keep an eye on for sure and making sure any, that, you know, it's a big move across the country to. So there's a lot of talk about environmental. You sound justice. pretty interested in this committee. Well, it was something I, you know, when I taught environmental law, I, I did quite a bit of work on that in my course. Mm -hmm. And it was just coming out back then in, in, in 1990 and 2000 is when it was really starting to come up a lot. And I, it's, it's blossomed a lot in a lot of communities. Yeah. There's no reason why we shouldn't be keeping an eye on that. Sure. Okay, so then, uh, um, Matt Miller was beyond committee. Yep. Thank you, Matt. What's, Luke, would the DPW be a appropriate department to be interfacing with? Or, I mean, sure. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, DPW, engineering. Yeah. Which was part of the development of also planning. DEC, we don't have a we don't have an environmental agency in the city, but we have the state DEC. Yeah. In some cases. Yeah, and there's local representatives. The EPA used to come and check out City Hall. They used to come and check out the garage. So do reports every year. So there's, yeah, uh, DPW should have some information about reports that they do. I would think planning, zoning, I don't think code doesn't directly get into that. Do they count? Do they um, uh, Contaminated soils? No. It's uh, interesting. The uniform code doesn't address toxic environmental issues after the fact. But there might be, other than asbestos, which is a Department of Labor regulation, it's not part of the building code. Mm -hmm. it, you have to cooperate with the state around that. But there, it's an interesting gap, and Matt and I had thoughts on this too, but really isn't a body of laws that I'm aware of at the local municipal level that deals with those kind of issues specifically. So like say in a permitting sense or in a investigative sense or a prosecutorial sense, uh, it, can, it can get kind of shady. It could be something simple like uh, an example in real, from real life would be like, like uh, vacant property with thousands of uh, tires in the stored in a building, uh, or perhaps uh, illegal dumping on a property of paint or, or solvents that's not commercial, it's like residential. Commercial properties, it's like EEC and things like that are kind of more set up for that, but for for issues that are more related to res residential kind of environments. So to me, that would be an area you could look at and kind of flesh out. Well, what about places that have caught fire? Huh? Places that are that like- uh, Yeah, yeah. yeah just like that. Industrial yeah. places that yeah. caught fire at one time. Yeah. Like? Uh, Amtec site and, and uh, was across the street and at Clinton Street. Several industries. Well, like it's like a uh, just, brandy wine yeah, tour. not to get into it a lot, but like that. I think it's Amrex Chemical, which I think he said. It's a, a large chemical company. Yeah. And 
But so they're governed by laws to operate the plant and to inspect and ensure and all that. But it, there's nobody that's got authority or or charge to tell whether that has any broader impact on the east side. You know, it's just not in the frame for it. You know, it's, 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 well. Right. It's in the it's, it's in the EPA. EPA. Yes, exactly. It's in the larger tenant. I remember having dealings with yeah. them. Well, not to single, not to, I, just use yeah. that as an example. Not yeah. to single them out. Yeah, no. They're in compliance, they're in compliance. Sure. I would like to move that we approve the public outreach and education committee. Do we have a second? Mm -hmm. Public outreach? outreach. Didn't quite hear. I, I move that we establish the public outreach and education committee. Second. Second. Second, Darius. That's your committee, right? I mean, I, I suggested <laughs> it, but yeah. Okay, be honest. I don't want to be honest. Sorry. No. no. Oh my okay. gosh. Okay. Well, even anybody that's not on the committee can always advise. You know, can always. Oh advise. yeah. So, or, or right. A lot of times, it's just a matter of connecting with people that can advise. You know, in your. Uh, if you people make these communities viable, right? Yeah. Two seems to be a magic number, but anything else is great. Uh, anybody want to be on the Public Outreach and Education Committee? I'll, I'll just offer vote. that maybe it's a little early oh, for some of us. Vote for the committee. Uh, all in favor of oh. the committee? Aye. Okay. Tom voting against it. Tom or abstaining. Okay, Tom abstains. Credit, we needed one of those. So that's four or five. I just want to offer that. I'm not sure we need to staff the committees because we may not know yet what we want to. Well, we started it. We might well yeah. finish it. I mean, you can get somebody fine. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I, people can't join later. Yeah, that's right. And we can have public people join too. So, sure. Those you got to have sort of educate the public first. Oh, cool. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. kind of early on. First, you want to get a message before you're putting it out. Right. So, um, Scott, you'll be on it. <laughs> I don't know yet, so okay. I'm, de I'm de deferring my decision to just dust it out. Anybody else? Maybe in the future, once I get a sense of how busy things are, yeah. And I will try and partake in most of these committees in some form. Anybody um, else want to propose a committee? Ashley brought up about the planning. Oh yeah, review plan review. Yeah, and I know there's a whole process for it. It's more of just advising the people that are on those um, commissions because there might be some things that they're not looking at, and as long if if it's in like the comment that we advise them in some way, and it's not included in those site plans or in their street redevelopment, it's just be nice. To there's some record that we suggested having it, you know. I would like to recommend that we have a motion to form a task force committee to do planning and review advisory. Does that sound right? Unless we just wanted to bring it to the whole committee here. I mean, when planning proposals come up. I guess I'm thinking along how the Shade Tree Commission worked. The, the, um, the, the, um, the person from the administration would just bring bring all of the, the plans and we would review them. Comment. So you'd schedule a meeting. Yeah, of course. Just but that regular. would be a that would be a, um, just at the regular meeting? Yeah. How long? How long would that usually take? Uh, actually, not too long. Maybe Ten minutes per uh, per proposal. Depend on the proposal. Somewhere, 
Right. Ideally, you get the proposals ahead of time too, right? Yeah. 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 So they mm -hmm. usually they yeah. wouldn't initiate anything, but just wait for proposals to come in and then yeah. 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 So the, I think what I was trying to say earlier is like uh, I think the initial if we form this committee, the initial task would be to find out how information is going to flow. Yeah, it's kind of like what we said. What seems simple can be complex. Like I was very actively involved in all planning approvals for ten years, and uh, it isn't always easy to get info the information to review it in a timely manner. So a lot of times, the planning commission members themselves wouldn't get documentation until the very, 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 very last minute. So I just anticipate frustration from a committee like this, which would be like, we need to get timely submittals or do a fair review and, and then offer our expertise and advice in a way that's useful to anyone else. And it's just, I, I'm just extremely cautious about that based on what I observed and what I experienced. How about if we start out, Julian's idea, as far as requesting, that any planning reviews, a copy of any planning, um, what is it called when it's first submitted? Submittal for review or what? It, uh, I'm well, not familiar with I, that. Well, I would say the first order of business would be is for that task force to try to get wrap their wrap themselves around like how the process works and is there an opportunity to be involved in that process truthfully because that's what. I, that's if you because it, it, then it goes down to the project level. The project level is supposed to be a 30 day cycle. So you would get the applicant for, of a particular project would have to have all their materials submitted 30 days in advance so it can circulate within the departments that have to review and approve it in order to get on a meeting agenda that's once a month. Well, understanding how city. Uh, works in most instances. That's why I'm recommending that we do it as a commission yeah. and just send them out a request right. that we be copied in as a commission yeah. on those reviews. On those materials. On the materials yeah. for the review, yeah. um, along with everybody else that they get sent to, so that we may comment. Yeah, and then as we can see how it works out. Yeah, and, and then from there, if need be, we will start a task force committee to look into getting the materials in a more timely fashion if need be. That sounds good. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So I will work on putting that request in place. Um, speaking for the commission, is that all right with everyone? So, so I take a motion now to form this task force committee. No, we're not going to do that until we see the okay. So we're exploring the possibility. That's, yeah. So a motion to table that vote. Motion to table the vote until necessary. Second. Second to table that. We're just going to draw Second, the Julia. Pardon? We're just withdrawing the motion. Yeah, we'll leave it. We'll leave it so we'll make the uh, motion to table. Tom, Tom. Okay. Second by Matt. By Julian. Julian. Julian okay. Second. Matt, third. Of <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay, let's see here. One more committee I want to propose. Okay. 
legislative committee to look into laws that protect us, protect the environment, and uh, look at other, other communities that might be doing things differently that we can learn from, and just to see what legislative needs we have as they interact with the other committees. And that's what city council does, right? Yeah, the request yeah. would go to city yeah, council. Yeah, the request would go to city council. Yeah. So why don't we just call it the legislative committee? Yeah. I'm just trying to find it. Um, and uh, as, as things come up, we'll be brought to that committee once we're ready. But, but we'll be doing that in a number of ways, possibly, without using the legislative committee to do it. I mean, it's okay. I. We may find out that it's not a useful. I see that a little bit down the road. Well, because you have to come up with things. The legislative committee, for example, they have to be formulated. We come up with ideas on how to. What needs to be done? Maybe maybe there's a obscure law already on the books that we don't know about, or we could see how other communities have handled the situation and how it's working. Things like that, just like sort of bring it to the next level before going to the city council. Or you could just go directly to or there, there could be other issues that are not covered in our, our committees that we might think. I, I see that as so. one of the final steps on different things we're working on as far as down the road. Um, because I, I think you have to iron a lot of things out. Sometimes, Before, but not yeah, there, there could be there could be simple ones. There could be a lot of gaps, you know. Uh, yeah. Laws. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That I'm you know, sure, we I'm need sure to just, there are. I mean, after after decades of not having this, right? True. We have a lot of catching up to do, so we could look at what other communities are doing and maybe just expedite a few simple things, and then you know, well, long term ones. One of our one of our first missions is to see where we're at right now to find out because I I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. Well, that breaks for ten minutes. That's all right. I think uh, Richard, um, my response to your proposal is also to be. Wait, because I just don't know how the workload impact of this, of this organization is going to like play out. Yeah, and that that we could just form that committee and spend a ton of time. I said, if you really want to do it right, in my head. So I just think it's important to just try to be fair to ourselves, like what level of commitment are we making? I think it'll be obvious that it'll come up. There, an issue will come up, and then the different committees, as discussion goes on and as we work on it, yeah, it should be like it will. Uh, the issue like will come up. Committee that, yeah. that if we have to, we think we want to propose yeah. something to yeah. the city council, then we'll just convene. But and, and as an organization, I, I think we're just getting started. We don't want to get branched too far out in too many different directions. Where uh, you know you're putting the finger in the dike, mm -hmm. and the holes just keep sprouting everywhere. Um, I think it's it's better to try and stay somewhat compact on our issues, and, and let it take us where it may. I would just say it's a commission that's sort of used when it's needed. Well, yeah, and that, and that's 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 in in the description. You know the, the twelve things in the bylaws that that's in there. Well, it's sort of it'll be sort of like the bylaw committee. It activates when it needs to and goes dormant when it doesn't need to. You know, that's, that's the way that it works. Not everything is an ongoing. Sure. Also, we might we may be getting input from the public that doesn't fit into it neatly into one of our committees. That's true. But we can't foresee other things. I think it's best to just let things happen but as they happen. Yeah.
could actually be a really good service learning project for people at either of the two local colleges, which both have courses in areas that would relate to this, and both are looking still for service learning projects. So, for example, at SUNY Group, you might want to contact either uh, the professor who at Walmart, like Catherine, uh, Catherine McKenna. Catherine right. McKenna. Or Kenny Leith, who runs the sustainability program. I think she would be much more interesting. Catherine McKenna. Kathleen McKenna. Kathleen McKenna. Although I think Kenny Leach might be a better bet, but I'm sure there are also people at university who would be interested in doing this as service learning. Also, both groups have a civic education learning system. So those students might also be interested in working on this. What was Kenny's last name? Leach, L E E T. And Kenny is K E N N I E. Oh, I. Nick Kenny, right? MC? No. Just Nick, Kenny? Kenny Wheat and Kathleen Nick Kenny. Oh, okay. I'm sure there are other people who would be interested in working on this. I just can't come up with the names right now. Both of them at SUNY Pro. Yes. I also uh, am taking a environmental law class at the university. Wow. Yeah, so um, my professor, Charles Wage, I feel like he might be interested in that as well. Professor? Uh, professor Charles Wage. Wage? Yeah, W-A-G-E. Oh, that's easy. Thank you. There is a <clears throat> department, a unit anyway, that's <clears throat> at BU that's concerned with com community relations. I wish I could remember his name at the moment. Uh, but you know, they monitor lots of internships around the. Uh, That's the uh, Center for Civic Engagement. Right? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Um, that's Trevor and Frank. I think when we go around, we'll start with it also. Yeah. Just sure. Sure. Um, okay, bringing it back in. So I, I, I move that we establish this legislative committee and look into these possibilities that we raised tonight as to develop it. Is there a second? on the legislation, uh, motion to form a legislation. Legislative committee. Second. Second by Darius. Uh, all in favor? Three in favor. Uh, all opposed? I'll just say that I think we should wait on that. That's why I would imagine. Yeah, like I said, I don't think there's any reason to form it right now. I think it's just we've talked about it. Let's, from, well, if we need to activate it, let's do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm on board with what Ed said. Yeah. Uh, do you want to make a motion for a future date? Yeah, okay. All right, motion with one. Yeah, just everybody, if we, if we find out something that we if something comes up, that, we're going to push. We think we have to do something yeah. legislatively to try to. Can we just yeah, I, I foresee the, the commission zeroing in and focusing as issues come up. I mean, we have to build the organization first. Before we can actually accomplish yeah. much of anything. So it, it takes a little while to build the organization. But there are things to do in the meantime. Um, to make the requests for the planning reviews, we're going to start requesting some data. Um, 
and get some of uh, the report from CNS and some of the background information from the different departments and we'll start putting some things together. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll explore, the different committees can start exploring uh, their questions and seeing what they're coming up with as far as, you know, we also want to stay somewhat within the bounds of the city and, and what we can do right here. I, I kind of like short term. I kind of like to see them also kind of a thing, but we could get some interns like the same people that are interested. Sure. Uh, some group, group looking at, you know, I, I just I'm where I worry about all the stuff we're creating here. I mean, I like the I like the managed native gardens thing because I think that's that's not such a, a stretch to get that going, but um, I think that if we you know best sort of a committee looking at other communities that are more developed in this way and have a commission going on and best practices committee sort of like that looks at what other communities are doing already and say oh that well statewide how successful they are at statewide there's a CAC group called the what is it conservation um, advisory, advisory committee yeah and it's it's like uh, under the umbrella of the county EMC, right? Um, by be, by having correct? a CAC, you get a seat on the EMC. Yeah. And I, I did look up, and there's like a state for seventy five dollars, you can join the state committee. And I, I looked at like Cortland, some other surrounding municipalities are members of that, which I foresee this commission basically doing what they do and, and well, that's what I'm saying if we get amongst them. other things. But I just briefly I looked at their website, the statewide organization. I didn't see where there was a whole lot going on there. Um, my, and I, and I, I just briefly looked at it. You know, I might be my guess that is that we had a couple of interns though that were really sure. keen to sure. try to find Right. That are doing a lot. Absolutely, agree. It's different it might be a community like yeah. We don't want to states away. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. Right. If it's already there and it's somebody has put the time and effort in, and and, uh, and, and we, they might come up with topics that we didn't even think of. Sure. And, and, sure. and that that uh, that are working well with you know like working well, that work well that the the, the people we're trying going to be trying to reach and say this might be a good idea. Well, it's you know, we'll probably embrace. You know. Well, now that we have a spot on the city website, um, hopefully any of us that come up with these places, resources of information, we can list the websites on that so that we can all do research and look over different things and come up with the topics. But I do think it's a good idea if there's any uh, student involvement that would like to do internships or be involved and um, you know if they can get double for their trouble as far as getting some credits exactly. and, and experience um, and we can get the benefits of their labor and knowledge right that would be great yeah. i'd just like to add a little history i actually served on something in the city that was called the conservation advisory commission uh, way back in the 1990s. I don't know where it came from. I've never seen it in the uh, bio or in the uh, um, the uh, city, you know, ordinances, but uh, but we had it. It died of starvation because um, uh, I'll, I'll point the uh, Juanita Kraft uh, said at one point she didn't need any uh, advisory commission and didn't support it anymore. So you know we couldn't do anything um we staggered along for a while but but there were some good ideas that came out of that so anyway so just thought you might like to know that it did exist at one point well it's just that you found this in the chart right this yeah yeah so i mean maybe that's what it was maybe yeah i never we called it the conservation advisory probably what it was, but, yeah. yeah right because we didn't I, we never stumbled upon it when we were in the office so I mean, we did a lot of things yeah. on the environment, but we didn't stumble upon that and, and yeah. populate the committee, which yeah. 
you know, hindsight would have been a nice thing to do. Probably. Well, the department heads were doing it. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were doing two. Yeah, we were doing a lot of things like uh, two, so forest yeah. asphalt. Like, you know, it would have been it would have been helpful to have more researchers right helping us out with yeah. the different issues that we were learning about as we were learning our jobs and whatnot. So I mean, I, I look at you know us being a tool for department heads as far as things that they're interested in that they would like to do in the department. Maybe we could do some of the research for them and come up with some ideas and make connections for them uh, that would help them out. So I think for tonight, that's probably enough committees if I'm wrong, right. because it's you don't want to get back down in meetings either. So uh, let's go around, and my apologies again for not introducing everyone. We'll start over here with Richard. We'll introduce ourselves and just a brief background. Brief. A brief, but spec a brief but spectacular background. I'm Richard Ginaccio, a biologist and a journalist with a bachelor's degree from Hunter College in Biology and Chemistry and a master's degree and a specialty in science writing from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And I uh, first became very interested in environmentalism when I crossed, did my first cross-country tour driving across the country and I saw the steam coming out of nuclear power plants. Then I, from, from there I, I saw strip mines, I saw all kinds of things as I traveled across the country and I saw how beautiful it could be and how some parts of it were terribly marred and destroyed because of activity to sort of engage in profit. And um, okay, so let's fast forward now that we're never finished here. I was um, at the University of Wisconsin, I detected biological weapons research and chemical weapons research that was illegal. Journalism Award for my investigative reporting called Project Censored in 1987. And I uh, also did a story about PCBs, Lake, Great Lakes. I was co chair of the Fort Totten Advisory Board, which is an um, advisory board set up by the Army Corps of Engineers to clean up toxic waste. Fort Totten in Bayside, Queens. And uh, so that's, I guess, why I have a slant towards the toxicology part of it. I also did um, audit Professor Quad's course in ecotoxicology and I found it very excellent and very based and she was a very excellent communicator. And um, that's, that's basically it. I've done a lot of writing and um, a lot of research. And I'm very interested in the interaction between environment and health and political policies that impact on both. Um, I'm Ashley Seifried. I am, uh, I live on the west side. And I went to undergrad at Villanova for environmental studies and political science, and then I moved here for my master's, which I got in public administration, focusing in sustainable communities. And then I worked for a bit at the Binghamton Metropolitan Transportation Study, which is the MPO around here that does transportation planning, so very interested in complete streets. Um, and then now I work for Southern Tier 8 Regional Planning Board, so it's a regional planning and economic development board. We cover eight counties. And I'm responsible for the sustainability planning that we do. So we do uh, eight county regional watershed planning, big focus on stormwater. Um, and then I run the Climate Smart Communities program for three counties here, which of 
the Climate Smart Communities Program is something that uh, communities work through. So the city of Binghamton did get a certified bronze, so I was kind of helping them with that. And one of the things that came out of that was the climate action plan that we're going to be reviewing with CNS. So. Oh, thanks, Tom. And uh, I was the uh, supervisor of code enforcement ten, about 10 years here in the city. And uh, in that position, uh, I was, in, I was uh, the chief zoning officer for the city. So other than the Corporation Council, I was referee zoning decisions before they went to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, uh, I served on the Planning Commission for the city prior to my tenure in the code world. Um, uh, I think I've worked with every department in City Hall more than I think at some point. Um, I try, uh, my background uh, educationally is uh, quite diverse. I was a history major at BU as an undergrad in the 70s and then uh, 90s, I got two uh, graduate degrees in fine arts. And um, also worked 10 years for the uh, Wood County Engineering Department doing facilities engineering. So, had a lot of experience with local government and especially in Binghamton and Wood County. So, that's what I bring to the table. And I'm kind of a pessimist at the moment. Any other question? I did work. I was a marketing director for an engineering company for ten years. So I did with my creative writing degree. <laughs> well, I'm Matt Ryan. I I was um, before I went to law school. I went to BU and I did a environmental studies and planning major, and then uh, went to law school. And then I uh, came back and. I was running one day. I used to run a lot. And Dick Andrews, right when I got back from law school, he drove by me and he stopped his car and goes, You graduate from law school? He goes, Yeah. Can you teach environmental law? I go, I guess so. <laughs> that was my interview. <laughs> that was back a long time ago. So I ended up doing that for 10 years. I taught that the environmental law and policy class every other semester. And that, you know, I always, my undergrad was in environmental law, um, but I was a public defender while I was doing that. So, it, but I, I've always wanted to have a bigger impact on the environment. I think as an administration, we did a lot of good things, but I, it's a passion of mine to try to, you know, always improve and, and pay attention to, you know, the, the planet we're wrecking. <laughs> and, um, and so that's why I was attracted. But don't to forget it. to admit that you were the mayor for eight years. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, my name is Darius. Um, I am an environmental studies student at BU I'm from Long Island originally. Um, and I work at the Rose Park Zoo, uh, not too far from here. I have uh, always been like passionate about uh, the environment, and um, I'm really excited to you know have this opportunity and to be able to work with you guys um, towards uh, forwarding the uh, forwarding the the interest of uh, Binghamton and um, its environment. Um, Yeah, um, I don't really have that much experience in environmental environmentalism yet. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting to you know learn a lot from you guys and to contribute what I can as a student from you know my unique perspective there and um, yeah, just being able to work with you guys towards uh, bettering this community. Great. Now I'll just say you will have something to offer us. Just being a, a young person, so good. Uh, Scott, um, I worked at IBM for 35 years. Uh, graduated from City of Binghamton. Uh, don't have a background uh, in uh, the environment other than being 
I guess an activist, volunteer. So I've been involved with the Sierra Club quite a bit. Um, also Vine, we talked about Vines earlier. Roy and I have collaborated some uh, doing water monitoring of the local streams that we have. Uh, I am interested in water quality. Uh, one time I was doing more to look at the city's water filtration plant, uh, or treatment plant, um, and they were providing me reports. So that could be something I get me interested in doing here. So, and uh, it's actually yeah. Julian. Yeah, I'm Julian. I've, I've been teaching at BU in biology for 50 years. I retired, finally retired about a month ago, but I'm dribbling on to doing a little bit of stuff there. But um, my central bag actually is um, uh, insects, but uh, I have wider interests. I've taught courses in uh, birds, I've taught wetland ecology, tropical ecology, um, physiology, and a bunch of other things. Um, Right now, I'm teaching a zoology course. Um, so, but my my sort of interest has been to that I think uh, professors should get out of the laboratory and uh, and actually uh, sort of interact with the public and institutions and uh, and help with um, with biological issues and or environmental issues. So I've been involved, as you might have guessed already from what I've said just in a lot of environmental uh, uh, concerns. So I guess I do care most about nature, and uh, but I do care a lot about urban nature as well. So, but I, I'm you know, interested in climate change and all that as well, so. Thanks, John. I haven't seen your hat in the storm sewer lately. You have what? I haven't seen your hat in the storm sewer lately. I think that's when I first met you. You're down oh, in yes. the corner of my street, <laughs> and I saw these feet sticking out and legs sticking out, and somebody with their head down there take, and reaching inside the storm sewer, and you were uh, getting mosquito. Yeah, we had a little through. contract with during the, um, uh, you know, the uh, West Nile virus uh, in the two thousand. We had a contract with the well, with the Boone County Health uh, Department to uh, survey for mosquitoes. So I got a bunch of students working in the summer, and we went around sampled sewers, but we also caught caught them in other ways. But the whole idea was reporting to uh, actually Albany on um, West Nile virus and mosquitoes as a symptom of where it might be for humans. Uh, my name's Luke Day. I uh, just got my 40th year in the great pipe fitters union as a welder. And I took a break from that and worked for the city. And uh, I was the commissioner of public works in that administration from 2006 in April to December of 2013. Those, that steam that you saw coming out of those new plants may have been one of the new plants that I used to work in <laughs> as a well. Oh, yeah. The first one I saw was actually the Trojan one working. I didn't work in that. But uh, I, I, did, I did work in Fukushima, so I'm here to pay my karmic debt. Because I worked for GE as a welder. We, we rebuilt the um, reactor which was the first one in the world that was ever rebuilt. I believe it was Fukushima Unit 3. Okay. That was in 1996, or 97, 98. Uh, I worked at Indian Point a lot. Well, I started out, the first new plant was a nine mile two in Oswego when they were building it. I worked there for a little over two years. 
and I found myself in my life, anybody that would work in one of these wants to feel about this crazy. Uh, about 10 years later, I found myself working, when work was tight, I found myself working there. And I actually liked the work itself. And which now has proven to be still controversial, but uh, they're not really causing greenhouse gases in comparison to coal and gas. In comparison. So, forever nuclear waste. Well, yeah, there's that. There's that. But most people do want electricity. And, mm -hmm. and somehow you have to build the bridge from here to there. So I think those are conversations that have to be ongoing. I also worked as a welding inspector on uh, gas compressor stations, for gas compressor stations, along with lots of other things chemical plants, paper mills, university. Of New York at Binghamton, wooden boilers, and all kinds of things. You did a lot of traveling. A lot of traveling, yeah. Probably half the time of that 30 years. Um, anyways, uh, I'm here because I do care about the environment, and it's good. And I, I see room for improvement and things that I believe could be done locally, uh, cost saving and beneficial um, as far as fuel, energy, usage, how things are done. Uh, I think there's a lot of room for improvements um, that are somewhat famous. Open to help the commission uh, the way I can to be a fruitful and enduring organization. Long after us old white guys are the majority at this table, <laughs> uh, hopefully there will be some diversification there for too long. And it was put open, I don't know. How much it was advertised. I almost had to look at the city website, I think. I know I talked to a few people to try and build up some interest, but I'm hoping as we go forward, if we can have a couple early victories and successes, I think we could maybe draw some students in and some younger people and just kind of turn it over to them. That's my, my hopes. And hopefully we can. Did tie in with several other organizations, which the more I started looking into things about six months ago, I, I found there's so many people around doing a lot of good things. And I think it's, it's a lot of them need to be attention needs to be brought up about them and the things they are doing, but also, you know, working together. I think there's a lot of good organizations around that we can help them out and really help us out. Anyway, uh, so, oh, let's, yeah, let's introduce the uh, uh, public who's here for the meeting. Jill Schultz, I did my undergrad in biology at Cornell and my master's in environmental science at Antioch. I worked at environmental organizations and arts organizations my whole career, bouncing back and forth, science writer as well. Recently, my real passion has been rewilding, and I am involved with two local chapters of the Wild Ones, and officer one of them. And I've always been um, a quiet activist in the environment. You guys have signs up? I thought I saw some Wild Ones signs someplace. Could be. Uh, I, I... No, I haven't heard of it. For tonight, but uh, Saturday, I, I saw something. Wild. Maybe around Albany? Chapter around Albany mm -hmm. really could be. Uh, yeah, so most problems. Native plants. 
Great. Thank you. Bill Altman, I'm an educational psychologist. My background is in how people learn, how people teach, how to make both more effective. Before that, my background was in organizational communication. With that, my background was as a historian. So degrees from Penn and Cornell. I teach at SUNY Broome. Much of what I do has to deal with teaching people to think critically and to make good sense better. I've also done a couple of courses with the Alvis Center down in Stony Brook uh, online. I'm Trevor Fernara. Uh, I am a recent new graduate. Uh, graduated with a uh, political philosophy degree. Uh, I'll be going back next year for uh, an MS in educational studies. Uh, I'm currently working as a fellow at the Center for Civic Engagement on campus, where I serve as the Civic Education Coordinator. Um, and I help to uh, coordinate civil dialogue programs that get students talking about uh, challenging topics. I do, and I'm here today because of Darius's roommate. Oh, sure. Have another Sure. Oh, thanks so much for coming out. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, also, if there's any help, I'm a member of the American Psychological Association of Legislative we, Do we have right. a, a sign in sheet? So, in case we wanted to contact you, if something comes up that we see now that what your interests are. So. And, and this, the, the commission information did get put on the city's website. Okay. So, the calendar will have any interviews and any documents and stuff that are trying to come to the organization. So you would just get it. Very, very nice. Are you the secretary of the committee for Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 You trust us with that? Sure. Thanks. This is good. It is? Yeah. Do I have a motion for adjournment? I bring something oh, up? Oh, sorry. Oh, 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 <laughs> discussion. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Two Except things, I guess, because the climate summit. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. The first thing is just as, I guess, would it would this be considered a CAC? Is that what the goal is? Because would that we would get a seat on the EMC? Uh, I, I would think that it would be considered one. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it has to be formally adopted by the city, do you know? I'm not sure. That's something I can figure out. Okay, but that would be very okay. be good to know. The key is probably in our bylaws, no? Well, that may have to be approved by city council. Uh, like the yeah. cons conservation advisory commission or council, depending. Yeah, I, I think I think that's a question for city council, okay. and then they will end up probably going to club council. Okay. Uh, see what has to do, but I do think that's a good idea because that organization is already set up statewide. Yeah. There's no sense in reinventing any of that. And the second thing is just yeah, the climate change summit. Um, I'm helping host this. Oh, right, 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 right. It's um, April 26th and 27th. The first day is focused more on organizations and kind of building your organizational capacity for climate change. And then the second day is focused on homeowners and residents in the Binghamton MSA area. And it's just going to be doing that one's going to be doing a simulation and looking at what different solutions give different re results for greenhouse gas emission reduction and then um, there's going to be like tabling where you can figure out talk about things about climate change with different experts so i know like Cornell cooperative is going to be there um, there's going to be stuff on composting um flooding a bunch of different stuff so uh, they're two degrees yeah so it's partnered with that so they've been promoting it from two degrees 
So University, Broome County Planning, Southern 2-8, um, United Way, I think one other. So could anybody from the commission sign up for that? On Anyone the, on can the sign Friday up. Friday, yeah, as being from the, as a member of the commission, and yeah. then on Saturday they could go just as a general public. Yeah, and even though Friday is more towards organizations, anyone's welcome. So you can be just oh, a regular okay. general resident, yeah. retired, and so. Yeah, go. if I'm if I'm in town, I plan on going a couple of days. And it's free and free lunch and all that. So. Free is always good. Yeah. <laughs> So when we get there, we should we register with somebody? You go online to register. Yeah. Oh, there's a QR code. You can... I can also, I'll send out the email that has uh, a link so in case you don't want to do the QR to everyone on the commission. Yeah. So, other additional agenda items? Yeah, I kind of got lost here. I'm sorry. All right. I'm still kind of out of it. Uh, but more so than usual. Do we have to make you have any extra emails? I didn't bring this. I think it's the only one, right? Uh, Maybe Sam yeah, can print it in. Yeah. Oh, I could have Sam to print some more. Do you want one? Yeah, I think that. Anybody else want one of these? Sure. I do. Got one electronically. Yeah. Okay. So we want three copies? You said the second part about the veteran. Yeah. Following, following the news around the um, International Building Code. I haven't been following it. So, uh, since early 2000s, the energy code has been a bigger and bigger part of the building code, even though it's one section of the code. One of two actually, but one in particular that doesn't deal with personal and public safety uh, in, a, in a literal sense. But, so there's there's volumes of the code are like this high and stackable. And the energy code went from being like this thick that keeps getting thicker and thicker. But uh, recently it's been headline news uh, because the city, city clerk Sam is already on it. What's that? Sam's watching us. She's oh, nice. <laughs> a fossil fuel so she's printing some. Have successfully lobbied the International Code to remove the most current energy code of, of grade, which was focused on things like uh, compelling uh, uh, facilities for electric vehicles and additional applications that weren't fossil fuel based. So it's just a heads up for everybody just to bring it in your news. And um, now I go to additional agenda items like a real thing. Sure. Okay. So um, the, I thought you were going to bring this up formally in the meeting about Robert Kavanaugh made a motion that we submit a report. Did that get clarified? No, I was not going to bring that up. Okay. All right. It was a public meeting and I saw it. So I okay. I'll bring it up then. Okay. I'll bring it up. Well, at the discussion about this commission in city council, he said something about we would submit a report within 30 days. That was like by the days. end of by the end of April. Said that it made sense. But anyway, the report was I, I requested them, City Council, to make a motion and get it approved so we could get data. So we had access to data from different departments having to do with the uh, climate action plan. Well, like I said, I, I would like to, personally, I would like to see the, the charts year by year so you could look at, I mean, knowing how public works functions, the fuel functions, all these different systems function or don't function, it would be nice to know, are they gaining, are they losing, where, where are the weak spots? You could easily put some fixes and remedies in there where you can have a reduction of fuel. 
We can have a reduction of electricity, natural gas usage. Where are the places that would be helpful? I mean, I'm a nuts and bolts person. I used to be pipe there and welder. That's the kind of stuff I work on is the, the inner workings of things, not so much what we're talking about, as you can tell. But anyway, so uh, there was a motion made, I believe, is that we are going to have access to that. And, uh, uh, I'm hoping uh, that a lot of effort doesn't have to be put into having access to that data because it would be helpful and it would be mutually beneficial. And Los Angeles Park and the city and the residents. So as far as the report goes, uh, I would be happy to write a report on what information we gained by the end of April. And in turn, give them the report and say how much information, because I, I will be sending out some requests for uh, data to the department cuts. We'll see what comes back. Sorry, so I'm not sure if you're at this point yet, but if you guys would mind if I join you to talk about your meeting schedule. Perfect. I have this yeah, big perfect. calendar and perfect. a little bit of insight into what's convenient for city employees and for you all. And you can get your room scheduled. Okay, do we need to talk any more about that? No. Um, okay, future meetings. I know I, I sent it out um, that it was requested by City Council Chairperson Odessa Matabetsky, or President, President of City Council, sorry, um, to have daytime meetings so that she could attend. What are the thoughts just going around the table as far as uh, availability? During days, I, I pushed for Thursday, second Thursday in a month, knowing that the EMC for the county meets on the third, right? The third Thursday. Is that correct, Ashley? Julia? We meet on I the third Thursday yeah, so. of the month. Yeah, it's definitely a Thursday. Please. So, people that go to meetings and similar meetings, usually if you're having the same day of the week at a similar time, that's the only reason why I proposed it now. But I did get feedback, as I mentioned, from- They meet on the fourth Thursday. Oh, the fourth? Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, okay, so the fourth. So I picked the second. Anyways, if the second Thursday of the month works, would it work during the day? Except for from about 11 to 1 for me. But yes. So like 1 to 3 would be good? Yeah. For you? Curious? Um, yeah. That should work for you? Yeah. Um, I mean, things come up. Except for your state, but things come up. But not everybody's going to be at other meetings. I probably wouldn't be able to be at most. Pardon? I wouldn't be able to do, like, daytime time Generally, I mean, it depends how long the meeting is. If like later in the afternoon, as late as possible, would be best for me. Or how, how so the latest, so just like for context, part of the issue at night is also that they have to hire additional security, which comes out of like either our, like the clerk's office budget or the IT budget. Um, I would say four, you could start at 4.30 because security is still here and they don't need that. But uh, the council president, uh, but she can't do, yeah, she can only meet up. Okay. That being said, I think Hadassah can also, I won't speak for her, but I know she is comfortable zooming into meetings sometimes, so that might be a possibility. Like if you had to choose between someone on the actual commission versus the issue. Yeah. No, I'm tired of them. Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, you're out. Ashley. So, Ashley, during the day, work wise. For the most part, can if we zoom, did like. Can you zoom in? Um, yeah. If, like, if we did. So, does she leave at 3 30? Is that what yeah, If she leaves okay. around 3 30, yeah, she goes in this separate day. That's fine. Okay. She's usually busy until.
when you have it in the middle of the day because chances are you have something before and something after. And I'm also concerned about the impact of public participation. Well, at this time, I'm more concerned about the commission members themselves because there's no sense in having a meeting if people can't make it. True. Just the same issue. But also, I'm, I'm thinking that when you break into committee meetings, which is where the action is hopefully going to be taking place for the most part, um, those meetings can be set whenever by the committee members in each of those committees. Can have those meetings. Sam, uh, the committee meetings, we can meet. So, again, with the caveat that I would need to have at least 72 hours of notice before the main meeting so that I can make sure that the notes are not already booked, that the time is appropriate. Also, again, caveating that it costs the city a significant amount of money for security, so we can like yeah. I just that assume out. avoid. Mm -hmm. I just assume avoid costing the city any money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Do, do committee yeah. meetings have to be public? Do they? Do they do um. So it depends. I would have to at least uh check, refer back to open meeting mm -hmm. law just to be certain. But I think. If you're meeting under a number of quorums, so if it's like just three of you meeting, you wouldn't have to be necessarily subjected to open meetings because you're a commission having a subcommittee meeting. It's not like the council having a committee meeting where they can only have, once they have two committee members, it constitutes, constitutes a quorum, but I would have to double check the bylaws again. Um, well, I think we could put it in the bylaws. Also, so even if it's public, yeah. so the, the public aspect of it isn't. Even really the problem because someone can always record it on Zoom um, from the city as long as it's during the day, like before, I guess that's five o'clock. Um, and there are a variety of ways to engage the public. Like you can have it recorded, like we're doing right now, or live stream it, like we're doing right now, or you can record it and post it afterwards. So there's a lot of options for engagement with people. That shouldn't really affect. In the Broome County, Public Library on Court Street has rooms available, and you can go on the, their calendar and request a room. The only caveat with them is they have um, different AV equipment, and it's harder for me to get into my Zoom on their Wi Fi. Like, my suggestion would be to you all we have the atrium on the second floor, which is a great open space. Um, has really great tech capabilities and either myself or someone from my team can help you out there. There's the city council chambers, which is a more formal environment. So if you're planning something where you really wanted to engage a lot of the public, I would suggest that that's a good space. Um, but people only come to, help, uh, to comment there in person. And that's just the way it's been since post COVID. And then the work session room will actually kind of a bit of a hybrid of the council chambers um, and a private area in the sense that people can still come and join. We still have use of the technology, um, but it's a little uh, less formal. The other thing about Chambers, compared to the work session room, uh, Chambers has a lot of other commissions and boards that meet there. Yeah. The work session room has city committees here, so it's just kind of yeah. navigating but, the space. And, and you can check the city calendar. Yeah. But I would. Uh, Another thing we could do maybe is go every other month, day, and evening. So, so Sam, the city has to pay the security. Yeah. Out here tonight. Yeah. Yeah. What time do they normally leave? Uh, so it's actually they have to hire a different security company because the normal security that works in the city only works until four thirty, and if there are after hours events, they contact. They have to be here just to let us in. To let us in, and they stay the whole time of the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, one thing you may think of is talking to Hadassah about she would be able to do this once a month at four thirty. 
that to me is like the biggest barrier. Yeah, I still think maybe maybe like one month during the day, have it here and have it the following month at the library. I don't know if this is a good time for everybody. Yeah, I'll just say you're still going to need a city employee to report the meeting for you because they won't give us an account of what the city employee. So you can contact me. But well, what if we <laughs> don't have some capabilities? Almost all meetings need to be reported and posted for open meetings. Well, like if the whole commission is meeting. I think that I could go to the library and set you up. I'm just pointing out that if you want to, and I, I again would have to confirm that, but I know like all of the other board and commission meetings are recorded and posted for public transparency. I think even if it's not technically in the charter, it's a really important part of this council's investment in commissions and boards this year that they want all meetings posted publicly. Um, I could talk to Bob also about if you guys could just record it on one of your own Zoom accounts and send him the recording, he might just be able to post it for you, which might solve that problem. So then it would not be a part of the live, but just record um, it? It depends on the Zoom account you have. If you have a is anybody Zoom here uh, I mean, at the like city, city council live? Yeah, this is live right now. Um, but it doesn't, it's yeah. not specific yeah. to the city of yeah. Bayonne. Yeah. As long as um, um, I don't need like special account. You say like you might need like a specific type account. Well, I don't know. So the only issue is that you wouldn't be able to live stream to the city of Binghamton's YouTube page. The only people that can is that do that. Required? No, it's not required. Okay. That's not required at all. No. I personally have no interest in that. So yeah. worried about you can just live. as easily just set up a meeting and record it. The only thing I would say is you want to check with Bob that he can post the recording for you. Okay. That's all. But that shouldn't be right. a problem as far as I know. Uh, sometimes those people watch the live stream and they comment. Comment and do the release, not. Oh, it's true. Not yeah. Yeah, I, I just um, keep it less cumbersome, at least for the beginnings, until we get going. I mean, we, we may have expanded uh, abilities as we go forward, as we start building the organization. But right now, for one thing, I wouldn't want to bore people with that. Um, you know, with just the minutiae of trying to get going forward. Once we have get some traction and, and have some things in place, I think we might be able to get, you know, it might be advantageous to have the ability for people to get more involved. But I think it's going to take a little while before the organization personally. To be honest, I can check with Bob about the Zoom thing. And there my so advice to you would also be like, if so you want to book every meeting at the library, that's like the need a terrible idea. Account, the library well, otherwise, they cut you off. Me, you don't have to Once concerned. you get set up, yeah, yeah. I, I think you don't have a paid account. account. Yeah, okay. yeah okay. that's about um, the over there. But for oh, now, if you'd like me to tentatively yeah. Yeah. book yeah. your next meeting for the second Thursday of May. At 4.30. Well, that's, um, that doesn't do anything for President Mayor She, with enough advanced planning time, she might be able to make that meeting, but. She's strongly pushing for a daytime meeting, but. Um, so let's, 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 well, let's, let's try and shoot for one o'clock. Our next meeting, or if it was a month from today, Ashley. Yeah, so I just have so on the second Thursday of each month, I have a standing meeting at two. Uh, so if okay, we could, how about the third? I can, yeah, the third, I, I don't have a standing meeting, so I can try to make as much as I can during the day. Oh. What's that? Let's have it on the third. Okay. So that would be May 16th at 1 o'clock. Does that work? I hate to throw another argument, but I'd rather have it at the end of the day. So 
like 330 rather than the middle of the day. Once again, it's Richard's uh, point. But it would, was there a and move to have it in the middle of the day or travel? The DASA can't at that time. Sorry? The DASA requested the early. This, is the, early the, this was the request. Oh, she, she did. That's the price. Yeah. She, she also, like, oh, she only has child care. I know. Until 330. Oh. Uh, okay. So that's her prediction. Yep. Okay. And uh, I also think we optimistically might get better participation from XFCO if it's during the day. Right. Okay. Even on a incidental yeah. basis. Well, yeah, if you if you want to do I, I know from experience and I used to generally go to most meetings regardless of when they were. Mm -hmm. But most department heads, different people that are, work for the city, they do not get paid to go to meetings outside of the regular work hours. So you're asking them, you're already asking them that. And chances are you're going to be asking them to get you some information. And it is going to be, at least at first, more work for them. And most people aren't looking for more work. Um, so, and we do want participation. So, I mean, that's my thing about okay. it. So, what is the work day? Is it four o'clock, five o'clock? Typically, nine to five. Yeah, nine. For some people. I can do one o'clock. It's okay. But I will just. And, and the thing is, if, to me personally, if it's not working out, we'll make a change. Yeah. If, it's, if it's inconvenient, if it doesn't make sense. Um, so, Ashley, in your case, the third Thursday works. Is that right? Yeah, or the, I first, mean, just, or the first Thursday. The third's fine. I I just can't guarantee I can be there yeah. the whole time. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to guarantee you that I'm going to be. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go with May sixteenth. I'm sorry. Yeah, sixteenth. Mm -hmm. so May sixteenth at one o'clock. So my suggestion then for the sixteenth. Is that you go to the atrium for that meeting, which is on the second floor? Um, you'll all sit comfortably there. Um, so you're talking about the Boone County Library? No, oh, yeah, upstairs. Oh, upstairs. Oh, there is an atrium. Yeah, oh. there's an atrium here. You can also go to the library, just take the elevator to the second floor. Yeah. The yeah, yeah, just because it won't interrupt the normal workflow day at the clerk's office. Because um, it does get kind of busy in the office and having people in the work session. Do you turn on the YouTube? Bob will do, yeah. Oh, IT will help you. We're going to tentatively look at that. I will look for the, I will look at the library. Oh, totally. And I will check in with Bob. Yep. And if we check with Bob about yep. that, and there is move me to set up a Zoom or that if need be. Okay, so we'll look into the library also, and we won't post that to the website, the location. Yeah, we can put the date down. Absolutely. At the time of the meeting. So one o'clock, uh, Thursday, what day is that? The 16th. 16th. And sorry, also just hope I'm not butting in too much, but it's, um, it's also fine to be flexible with the location every month. A lot of town committees and boards, if they know they're having people come to speak, but they want to be in a formal environment, they'll do it in chambers. If they're in a less formal environment or they don't expect a lot of public participation, they'll be in meetings. Like, it, it can vary, and you're more than welcome to change it. And I think the library is a really, really good option in terms of engaging as much of the public as you can kind of be comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I So I'll, try, I'll follow up. My understanding is that they have one room that's decorated. They have two rooms. Two rooms. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of seating, and they're very helpful. And in your experience, have people been able to get the same team? I think so. I think it's pretty flexible there. They don't seem, they actually have a lot more to come. Nighttime participation for what I've seen. Like, they're obviously they close at eight, but yeah, I spoke with one of the guards there at the EMC meeting uh, security, and he said that he's there till I think it was eight or nine o'clock. Yeah. Anyway, 
So I mean, maybe as soon as we finish our meeting there, we should always book the next meeting to make sure nobody else gets there. Yeah, and they, they have several different rooms also. Yeah, but uh, I looked Sam said only the two of them have one of your visuals. Oh, okay. But you can book sure. as many times as you want ahead of time. You don't have to wait for your meeting to be done. Uh, yeah. Yeah, within reason, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so I'll just have Bob put on the calendar at 1 p.m. May 16th, location TBD. And then just a reminder that I always need the agenda. And if you have any supplementary materials, I can put them into a packet for you. But I need that 24 hours in advance of the meeting. Um, and even if the meeting's at night, I need it by at least 4 30 the day before because the IT staff. Is well, on. We'll get to it. Yeah, that's fine. Just give me a heads up. Yeah. I'll get out of here. Um, next order of business. In my absence, um, we nominate somebody to chair the meetings. I'm not here. I'll nominate Richard. Do we have a second? Sure. Do we have a second? All in favor? He hasn't refused yet. <laughs> Okay. You almost did the one tonight, so it's, a, it's official. <laughs> yeah, it's just better to have these things in place. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Don't forget to put that in the hats. <laughs> um, anything else? Any uh, other? Are we expecting to meet over the summer? Do you think, or how do you feel about that? How I feel about it is if the weather's good and my wife isn't working her two 12 hour nights over at CCU at Wilson, we'll be out of town and bicycling somewhere. <laughs> um, that's my feelings about it. As far as, and I'm not a, a big meetings person unless there's reasons to have meetings and there's topics that need to be hashed out. We could do some on email, right? business oh we can do all kinds of business through email i mean like a, my, my point is i think the committees are there to do the, the work on the topics everybody has their interests and things they want to get involved in and dig into which is great and then these these formal commission meetings are to bring them all back together report so everybody knows what everybody's up to and see if they want to get more involved or less involved and hopefully at some point we have things to push for legislation. We have uh, comments for planning reviews and we have some helpful educational tools that we can distribute to department heads or general public or whoever. And that's my thoughts on it. I would like to get into things. Set up a shared Google Drive. Does that sound good? Great. That yeah. sounds great. Anybody that can set up any of this stuff, and the simpler the better. Okay. I still do. Uh, if we're going to do something like that, which I think is great that you volunteer to do that, but we're an official city committee. So we have to we have to follow the governance rules of the IT department, which may prohibit us from sure. doing something like yeah. that. So I think if we if you know I'll volunteer to do it, but write down your suggestion and then we can notify the IT director. Sure. Is that a good question for Sam? Or you think yeah, I mean, Sam would do that. Okay. You know, she could do that. Um, you know, we could email her. You could email Sam and say this is our request. We want to do this? How do we do it? Or anybody could email. You know, they don't have to be there. We'll be there. I didn't I'm I'm just saying that. It's just so that come off of it. That's good. Yeah. Just so, yeah. And things that are not uh, for sure, we could put them in the bylaws and then they could put it to Club Council. Club Council is going to have to approve that bylaws at some point. But we also want it to function. Well, you know, there's no sense. Yeah, it's, 
I think the clarification now, I don't know if you can help with that, but it's kind of like uh, another thing I'm involved with the city as a retiree right now is uh, the, the uh, clerk's office is responsible for FOIA requests, freedom of information. And there's a difference between information and data or information and records. So let's say we're corresponding with, with email and someone submits a FOIA request to see our email. That's where that governance becomes really critical because if we're doing it on our personal accounts and it's not inside of a formal structure that's been reviewed and approved, does that constitute a legal record? Could it be used in a court of law? Yeah, well, we don't, we don't have been into email addresses. Like, well, okay. we don't have city. But just as a hypothetical or an sure. example, yeah. If, be, comes if up you're going to do, we'll if you're going to do official that. correspondence as the duties of your participation in this committee, you have to do it through city email. You can't do it on your personal email. That exists. I know. Like we Florida. don't, we don't have city email addresses. I understand that. So that, that, that can be addressed by court counsel once. We'll go through the bylaws. Okay, but I make a motion that we contact court counsel and find out what the governments are around our correspondence. That's that's what my point is. Anybody want to second that? Sure. Second that. Yes. So the motion is the town is going to contact court counsel. I'll do that. To request or the court. I'll go through the court, but yes. Here's an example. If you use your personal email account to correspond officially for this committee, someone could get, get legal access to your email account. And I don't want someone pulling it to my email account. Yeah, I think that's right. a good question. And the reason they would have access to it is they would say, I want to see all the records from your correspondence. And they, they would have to get in my account to verify that. Okay. Well, we're going to leave it where it is. All right. All in favor? All opposed? Uh, well, I just, to me, it's, I'm not looking to make things more cumbersome. But I'm not saying that it can't come up. Well, I'm just saying there's a lot of fish to fry in this pan. No, not for nothing, but. We both listen to Bob Joseph regularly. And there's a certain person that's a frequent flyer on that show who foils everything all the time. And for some reason, Bob Joseph called uh, my wife's cell phone for that. That's hilarious. And just said, uh, This is Bob Joseph from whatever station he's on. And left his phone number with no. Well, that used to be my home phone number. So I assume so. I don't know why. You probably were. Well, you probably heard about yeah. this committee once you're on the radio. I, yeah. I, I, Explain I, the I job for so. me and what you're doing. <laughs> Anyways. He's <laughs> probably uh, <laughs> I'm actually. All right. He, he it's getting late adjourned. for me. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. In all in favor. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you everybody, for showing up and yeah. Contributing. Just, just wanted you guys to know Julian rode his bike tonight. He's been doing that for 50 years, I guess. I was gonna, but I thought it was gonna rain. So well, it's pretty, probably raining. That's so I so I actually now. walked. When is sunset now? Uh, That's what I, told you. I think it was back around 730. Can you take off your front tire easily? I can get your bike. Oh, go over. Who's kind of Yes, No, I think it's a good don't, don't post it. I, uh, yeah, just don't post it. I, 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 I